Silly. <laughs> my name is Joshua Fakir. <laughs> my name is Sue Ann Fakir. And together we want to welcome you to The First, which stands for finances, intimacy, relationships, sex, time, and we also like transparency. So we thank you for joining us today. Um, Sue Ann and I, we are happy to be with you. We are actually coming to you and we're getting ready to be celebrating 14 years of marriage in May, May 6th. And so through those 14 years, we bless God for that for everything he's brought us through. So for today's topic, we are going to be talking about some money, yes. finances, mm -hmm. and we have three great tips for you today. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested, just keep watching. Yeah, right. Oh. Right now, one of the alarming facts or statistics when it comes to marriages, over 50% of marriages are ending in divorce. And you've guessed it, one of the top three reasons for that is finances in certain instances where when, when the money is looking funny and the, and the change is looking strange and um and and it's a it's a miscommunication it oftentimes but when situations can go on and it leads to divorce oftentimes it's because of money and so it makes me think of our story <laughs> we got married at a young age yeah. we were 21 we didn't have a stockpile of money in the account no we basically we married and we didn't really have much. We didn't have anything. We were 21. We were um, full-time students. Uh, and we tried to work full-time as part as much as we could. Uh, we're trying to balance school and work and really we was making just enough to get by. We had some really interesting times. Oh yeah. I mean you, you times you, and struggles yes. and just and and we lived in Tallahassee at the time so yeah. we only had each other. We didn't have like our family to rely on yeah. at that time yeah. so and, and part of that was because we didn't want to be a burden you know they if, mm -hmm. if they they helped out wherever they could knowing that we were a young newlywed couple um but we didn't really say too much about some of the things we were going through and it, i believe it made us stronger really um because yeah. we had to learn to depend on each other and rely on each other and not turn on each other and, and that really was kind of made us mm -hmm. want to bring mention this topic today because i remember the days where Every every day we need a miracle. <laughs> listen, every day we need a miracle. I mean, listen, you guys. I don't think we had a we had a lot of chicken patty dinners. I don't think I had Tostinos pizzas. The little that's what they were called. The little, the little chicken patties and the chicken patties. Yeah. I don't think I had a chicken patty every since day. that. The same money that was supposed to go to groceries was the same money for gas. It, it was real real tight back yeah. then. So this is where we're, we're talking something that we've kind of been through. And I'm not saying we're there yet where we want to be. Yes. But we want to just share with you some things that, that helped us along the way. So that through the even through the years of struggle, we stayed on one accord and didn't turn on each other. Relationships, it's, it's all about communication. It's a communication is key to make any relationship work. Believe it or not, communication is not just expressed verbally. We know that there's body language, but what a lot of people don't talk about is finances. It's a form of communication. You communicate with each other. Is everything okay over I'm here? Sure it's crooked. Okay. <laughs> She's communicating right now. So, I mean, it, it's finances is a form of communication. We communicate with each other through our spending. We communicate with each other through our savings. I mean, it's a lot of times you have a conversation about what took place financially. So finances sometimes kick off the communication. So tip number one is to track your money. What, what do we mean by track your yeah. money? We mean to create a budget. Yes. A lot, I know, I know, to sit down and to think about yeah, yeah. what am I spending? What do I have coming in? Mm -hmm. and, and creating a system, creating a budget where you know where your money is going. If you don't tell your money where to go, you'll spend all your time trying to figure out where it went. Uh, many of you, you probably had experiences where you probably got paid 
and you know where you you swiping wow. and you not you know you think you know I got enough and I swipe it and it's the same the same 20 30 however much dollars you have for this it's the same money that you're using on that because in your mind you got it until you go back and you check your balance and something's looking you know funny and you thinking okay so I'm definitely getting fr some fraudulent activities happening and you go back and you look and we've done this before. Okay, was this you? Yeah, that was you. <laughs> was this Hagen you? Hagen dog. <laughs> <laughs> you had you had you had subway for lunch. Okay, yeah. And you go back and you look in every of one of those expenses you can account for. And no, you were not defrauded by somebody. Oh, and when you totaled it up, oh my god, three hundred dollars. Yeah. And you're like. What? What did we do? <laughs> and, and now you're praying for another miracle. But it's it's it can happen so fast. We're not created to serve money. Money is created to, to serve, serve us. us. When you're tracking your spending, now it's you you're in you and you have the power over your money, and your money doesn't have the power over you. There's an end goal in mind. There's yes. a vision. Correct. There's a purpose. You're working towards something. When we were just dating, right. we didn't combine our money. Right. We we kept it separate. Mm -hmm. We didn't start combining our monies and and doing our budget together. Right. Uh, until we were actually married. Yeah, that's, that's that's a really good point too. Just to kind of you know play it safe. You know, you want to kind of make sure that you're managing. What we did is we helped each other with each other's budget yes. based on what goals she had yes. with her money, what goal I had with my money. But then when we got married. Her goals became my goals and vice versa. And her money became my money. <laughs> my money stayed my money. And so, <laughs> no, no, but, but, yeah, but keeping it separate when you're dating is so good. Yeah. Um, because you learn the other person's spending habits. That's very true. And you can actually work on each other's spending habits before you're married. That's part of the before application. Before you combine your, right. combine your monies <laughs> together. Because, you know, if he's making more money or she's making more money and mm -hmm. the one that makes less money is the spender. There's always the spender and the saver. Right. So if the spender is making the less money, that spender just you know, came into a, a, a trust fund of money. Yes. <laughs> so yes. extra money that they think that they could spend. Right. But if you develop that communication, Absolutely. like Joshua said, that financial communication before right. mm -hmm. you get married, right. then you know whether or not they have Right. Uh, Ten credit cards. Right. With with fifty thousand dollars of debt. Right. Which segues us into point number two. And point number two is is spending less than you make. I know it sounds simple, and it is simple. It may not be easy at times because you could, depending on where you're coming from or how you're recuperating. When we decided to really get into these steps. We were kind of digging ourselves out of a hole, I would say. Mm -hmm. And so it was like we understood this, but we had to get to a place to where we can apply it uh, effectively and efficiently. Saving money, what it'll do for anyone, is it's put you in a position where you have options. Options meaning that, you know, there's things that we've, we've encountered where there's things we wanted to do or partake in or invest in or whatever the case was. And if we wasn't tracking our money and if we wasn't spending less than what we made, there was options we missed out on. Being in a position to where you can actually can partake in different things that it comes your way, depending on if your budget allows you to. It's little things like getting the car fixed, yes. or you running to get something from the store that is a necessity, yeah. either for your children or your kids, right. back to school shopping, yeah. or you know something that you may need. That, that stuff should not be a crisis. Absolutely. When hurricane season rolls around, yes. if you live in South Florida, you yeah. know when hurricane season is coming. Right. And you know when everybody waits to go to the store. Absolutely. When the hurricane, is projected to hit like two days out. Yeah. Everybody runs to the store right. at that time. Bye. Why not have the money set aside to have your disaster supplies right. before hurricane season right. comes? Right, absolutely. It feels good to be proactive. It feels good to not yes. be reactive and being in that pandemonium, that rush where your heart, you get your heart rate going and yeah. it's, it's unnecessary stress. And so, I it mean. It gives you the option to not be in a stressful situation. Absolutely. When a crisis happens. Absolutely. That's what, that's it right there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's gonna be a, <laughs> it could be a crisis <laughs> for others and, and, or it can be just an inconvenience for you. And so, number one, just quickly is, is, is tracking your money. Yes. Tracking your money. Number two, spend less than what you make. Mm -hmm. And number three 
is I have multiple streams of income. Now, I want to, Sue is really good in just kind of talking about it, but multiple streams of income. What do you oh, mean by that? Oh, yes. Um, listen, I believe that, well, both of us, Joshua and I, we believe that every gift that you have is a stream. Absolutely. But not only that, most importantly, you shouldn't, you shouldn't rely solely on yes. your nine to Ooh. five. So true. To yeah, so true. get you financially where you want to go. That you shouldn't true. rely on that yeah. one thing as an income because if you lose your job, yeah. then you don't have any source of income coming in right Absolutely. now. There's multiple ways that you can make money. Yes utilize every stream yes. that you can the monetize there's different things that you have to offer that can be a stream of income so if it's a gift or a talent i want you to go back and and think about those things that you do well and think about how you can monetize it i mean people are monetizing i i mean i watch we watch our kids we pass by the living room <laughs> they're not playing games you know what they're doing they're watching someone else play games on and, YouTube. Oh, and i'm like wait i remember when back in our days when you had the nintendo and it was one person could play at a time mm -hmm. and you got wait for one person to die so that you can play and so I hated watching somebody play I wanted to play they, they're sitting, <laughs> they're there sitting there watching freely someone else play video games and people are monetizing yes. I mean they have a youtuber that they watch who the other year made 17 million dollars in one year he was the top he was, he the, was the top, the top YouTube paid paid YouTuber, YouTuber was a video game man I will never forget that because I'm like man that that should have been me <laughs> you know but so if you're good at something, you can make money off of it. That's the beauty of it. And so, I mean, and what I think Sue brought up a good point with the, the, the income part, not relying on one source of income. In the last step, step number two, it was spending less than you make. When you spend less than you make, you can have a savings account. You can have emergency funds. So in step number three, when you're finding out different multiple streams, if you lose one stream right yeah. now, it's scary. Or, or if, if, if you're, if, you know, if your boss, the cockroach man is <laughs> getting on your nerve and you say, what? oh, guess what? <laughs> I <laughs> you, you have streams. I mean, you have options again. And, and you have resources. So step number one was to track your money, mm -hmm. keep a budget. Yeah. Step number two is to live on less than you make. And save. And save, yes. yes. And step number three is to have multiple streams. Multiple streams. Okay. So when you're putting these steps into practice, it puts you in a position to where you can have options and you can have a peace of mind even in the midst of crisis. And so some of you, you're already doing well. Some of you, you already got your system down and you're doing well. Keep doing that. Don't stop because we can see at any moment economy can totally go south. And for totally, and totally go south. And you know, don't rely on the government for your retirement. Yeah. Please, you need to be saving money saving and putting money. money up for your retirement. Yeah. And if you get money from the government, consider it A as bonus. extra. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So you, you are in control. Yes. You think of it that way. You are in control. Everything you're doing, it's in control of your household and your future. And that's how you spend and that's how you save. And so, I mean, we hope this will bless you. Uh, you know, we, we, it's not going to be the last time we're going to discuss finances. We'll be taking deeper dives. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to comment below or you can send this message directly. Remember, finances is part of your communication as, as a married couple. Uh, and because that's one of the top three reasons for divorce. So we're we're settling that we're checking that box off so we hope this blessed you uh, and we do thank you for joining us yeah. um, if you haven't done so already please go ahead and subscribe to our channel mm -hmm. if you like these types of videos please give us a thumbs up mm -hmm. uh, so that we can continue to provide you more content mm -hmm. like this yes and if you hear you saw that that was lightning if you saw that <laughs> on the screen but also just for those of you as we talked about multiple streams of income Time out, we, ju we just released a video. There it is. There it is. Uh, for those of you who are talking about multiple streams of income, Time Out, we just released a video about leaving no skills behind. And it's a great testimony about someone who decided to utilize their skills, even the ones that they were overlooking, and how it's completely changed their life. So go ahead and check that out too. All right. All right. So thank you guys for joining us on the first. Again, my name is Joshua Fikir. My name is Suan Fikir. And we wish you all the best. And remember to keep God first. Keep that money in the bank. Yes. <laughs> Voodoo. Voodoo. <laughs> All right. Bless y'all. God bless you.